The Jedi Knights led many efforts to explore the galaxy in the past, discovering new worlds and uncovering secrets of the Force. Though the Jedi Order is no more and the Empire rules the stars, there are still seekers who venture into the wilderness, uncovering new dangers and ensuring the spirit of the Jedi endures. Begin your journey into exploration and discovery with Savage Spirits. This supplement expands upon the Force and Destiny role-playing game, adding new content for seekers and other characters who desire to venture into the unknown. Ready your lightsaber and call on the Force as you leap into the wild to blaze new trails, uncover new systems, and deal with deadly new threats. This is a review of Savage Spirits. Let's dive in. So here we have Star Wars Force and Destiny, Savage Spirits, a source book for Seekers, copyright 2016 by Fantasy Flight and Edge Studios. The introduction of this book delves briefly into what Seekers do and how they fit into the Star Wars universe. While not directly obvious, Seekers are kind of like Rangers in Dungeons and Dragons terms. They embody being in nature and stuff like that. It's good fluff if you don't know what a Seeker is, but hopefully you do because you picked up the source book, if not. But if you like it, then you'll like it. If you don't like fluff, then you can easily skip it. Solitary Travelers is the chapter for new player content. Here you'll find species and new specializations. First, we have new moralities for the seeker. We have things like bravery and recklessness, love and jealousy, caution and fear, enthusiasm and disarray, empathy and vengeance, assertiveness and obstinacy, curiosity and obsession, pride and disdain, independence and arrogance, ambition and cold-heartedness, justice and mercilessness, discipline and closed-mindedness. Lots of ninnitus in this section. There are three species to check out in this book, Ankhs, Ithoria, and Quermians. Ankhs begin the game with a three in brawn, a one in agility, and a two in everything else. Their wound threshold is 13 plus brawn, and their strength threshold is 10 plus willpower. However, they only begin the game with 85 XP. They do begin the game with Kill with Kindness, which allows them to remove a setback die from leadership and charm checks, and they have anatomical knowledge. Ankhs have an innate grasp of how bodies are put together and are able to intuit the anatomical vulnerabilities of almost any species. Ankhs gain one rank of the Lethal Blows talent. They also begin the game with one rank in Survival. They also have Mood Indicator. If an Ankhs' head crest is not covered, the character upgrades the difficulty of Deception checks once. Ithorians begin the game with a 3 in willpower, a 1 in agility, and a 2 in everything else. Their wound threshold is 9 plus brawn, and their strain threshold is 12 plus willpower. They begin the game with 90 XP. They also begin the game with 1 rank in survival, and they have an attack ability, Ithorian Bellow. With 2 mouths and 4 throats, Ithorians have a unique natural weapon they can call upon when threatened. This attack uses resilience. It deals 6 damage, a crit range of 4, it can only be used at short range, has blast 3, concussive 1, slow firing 2, and is stun damage. Each time they use this ability, they suffer 3 strain. Quermians begin the game with a 3 in intellect, a 1 in brawn and presence, and a 2 in everything else. Their wound and strain threshold is 10 plus the relevant characteristic. They only begin the game with 85 XP though. They begin the game with 1 rank in perception, and they have six limbs, that's two legs and four arms, which allow them to make an additional free maneuver. Although, remember, they still may not perform more than two maneuvers per turn, it just allows them to make their second maneuver for free. Seekers have three new specializations, Executioner, Hermit, and Navigator. A Seeker's career skills include Knowledge Xenology, Piloting Planetary, Piloting Space, Ranged Heavy, Survival, and Vigilance. The Executioner adds Discipline, Melee, Perception, and Ranged Heavy to that list. In the first tier, we have Grit, so they gain plus one Strain Threshold. They have Quick Strike. Add a boost die per rank of Quick Strike to combat checks against targets that have not acted yet this encounter. They have a rank of Toughen, so they gain plus two Wound Threshold. And they have Quick Draw. Once per round, draw or holster a weapon or accessible item as an incidental. In the second tier, we have another rank of Grit, but we also have Mind Over Matter. The character may spend one Destiny point to recover strain equal to his willpower rating. There's also Hunter's Quarry. Take Hunter's Quarry action. 
make a hard survival check to upgrade the ability of all attacks made against a target at long range until the end of the character's next turn. And there's Lethal Blows. The character adds plus 10 per rank of Lethal Blows to any critical injury rolls inflicted on opponents. In the third tier, we have another rank of Lethal Blows. We have another rank of Quick Strike, but we also add Improved Hunter's Quarry. Suffer two strain to perform Hunter's Quarry action as a maneuver. And we have Precise Aim. Once per round, may perform Precise Aim Maneuver. Suffer a number of strain no greater than ranks in Precise Aim, then reduce target's melee and range defense by that number. In the fourth tier, we have another rank of Precise Aim, but now we also have Terrifying Kill. And by the way, this is an ability where if you actually take it, you gain a conflict for every session. So be forewarned if you do decide to take this talent. The character may spend one destiny point to take the terrifying kill maneuver after incapacitating or inflicting a critical injury. Roll a force die no greater than force rating and spend light or dark side pips to inflict one strain on each character within short range of target. We also have marked for death. Take the marked for death maneuver, committing a force die. Add two advantages to combat checks against target while the force die remains committed but cannot use this talent again until the original target is incapacitated or the session ends. And there's also Death Blow. After making a successful attack with a non-starship vehicle weapon, the character may spend one destiny point to add damage equal to his willpower to one hit of the successful attack. In the last tier, we have another rank of Lethal Blows, but we also have Essential Kill. When making a non-gunnery combat check, the character may add a Force Die no greater than his Force Rating to the check. The character may spend a light or dark side pip to add advantage or three light or dark side pips to add a triumph to the result. There's a force rating increase and then there's dedication. So gain plus one to a single characteristic. This cannot bring a characteristic above six. The Hermit's additional career skills include discipline, knowledge, xenology, stealth, and survival. In the first tier, we have Forager. Remove up to two setback dice from skill checks to find food, water, or shelter. Survival checks to forge take half the time as well. We have Soothing Tone. Once per encounter, when riding a beast, perform Soothing Tone action, attempting an average knowledge xenology check. If successful, the beast recovers strain equal to successes, or heals that number of wounds if it does not have a strain threshold. There's a rank of grit, and then there's one with nature. When in the wilderness, the character may make a simple survival check instead of discipline or cool to recover strain at the end of an encounter. In the second tier, we have another rank of grit, but we also have conditioned. Remove a setback die per rank of condition from athletics and coordination checks. Reduce the damage and strain suffered by falling by one per rank if conditioned. We have menace. Enemy within short range of the character's bonded animal adds a setback die to next combat checks made against the character. And then there's Animal Bond. Develop long-term bond with single animal of silhouette equal to half force rating rounded down. In the third tier, we have another rank of grit, another rank of conditioned, but we also add enduring, so we gain plus one silk value, and we also have survival of the fittest. Once per session, when making a single check, the character may treat his force rating as being equal to ranks in survival. In the fourth tier, we have a rank of force rating here, which is really unusual, but we also have improved animal bond. When spending a maneuver to direct a bonded animal, the character may suffer one strain to add a boost die to the animal's next check. We have harass. Whenever the character's bonded animal makes a successful combat check against a target, it may forego inflicting damage to upgrade the difficulty of the target's next check once instead. And then there's Force Connection. When the character performs a Survival or Knowledge Xenology skill check, he may roll a Force Die no greater than his Force Rating. The character may spend Light or Dark Side pips to add successes or advantages to the result. At the final tier, we have another rank of Grit. We also have another rank of a Force Rating increase, but we also have Natural Outdoorsman. Once per session, may reroll any one resilience or survival check and their shroud. The character may spend one destiny point to make himself undetectable via force powers and make his own powers go unnoticed for the remainder of an encounter. 
Very useful, by the way. The Navigator's additional career skills include Astrogation, Knowledge Outer Rim, Perception, and Survival. In the first tier, we have Studious Plotting. When making a Streetwise or Survival skill check to navigate on a world, the character may use Intellect instead of Cunning. There's Expert Tracker. Remove a setback die per rank of Expert Tracker from checks to find tracks or track targets. Decrease time to track a target by half. There's Shortcut. During a chase, the target adds a boost die equal to his ranks in shortcut to any checks made to catch or escape an opponent. And there's a rank of grit. In the second tier, we have Galaxy Mapper. Remove a setback die per rank of Galaxy Mapper from Astrogation checks. Astrogation checks also take half normal time. There's Improved Shortcut. When engaging in a chase or race, may suffer too strain to add a success equal to ranks in shortcut to the check. There's Planet Mapper. Remove a setback die per rank of Planet Mapper from Streetwise or Survival checks used for navigation on a world. Such checks also take half normal time. And there's Preemptive Avoidance. May spend one destiny point to disengage from engaged enemy as an out of turn incidental. In the third tier, we have another rank of Shortcut, but we also add Swift. Do not suffer usual penalties for moving through difficult terrain. We have Uncanny Senses. Add a boost die per rank of Uncanny Senses to all perception checks. And we have a rank of Toughened. In the fourth tier, we have another rank of Galaxy Mapper, another rank of Planet Mapper, but we also have a rank of Force Rating in this tier. We also have Holistic Navigation. When making an Astrogation skill check, the character may spend one destiny point to remove Despair or to remove Threat equal to his ranks in Perception. In the final tier, we have One with the Universe. Once per session, meditate, then perform One with the Universe action, make an average Astrogation check. If successful, add a Light Side Pip to all Force Power checks in the next encounter. If successful with Threat, add Dark Side Pips instead. We have Intuitive Navigation. When performing an Astrogation or Knowledge Outer Rim skill check, the character may roll a Force Die no greater than his Force Rating. The character may spend light or dark side pips to add success or advantages to the result. There's Master Starhopper. Once per round, the character may suffer two strain to decrease the difficulty of his next astrogation check by one to a minimum of easy. And there's a rank of dedication. Seekers also have a new motivation category, Pursuits. This will include things like justice, wealth, knowledge, deadliness, happiness, exploration, the force, self-reliance, efficiency, and vengeance. Seekers do have two signature abilities, unexpected demise and unmatched pursuit. Signature abilities are powerful, usually once per session abilities. These are attached to the bottom of a specialization that matches the career for that ability. There are also upgrades that you can purchase. Unexpected Demise's base ability says, once per session, as an action, the character may spend two destiny points and make a hard perception check. If successful, for the next two rounds, the character may spend one maneuver to add one automatic triumph to his next combat check made in that turn. In addition, for the next two rounds when the character inflicts a critical injury on a rival NPC, the target is immediately incapacitated in the same way as a minion NPC. Unmatched Pursuit's base ability says once per game session, as an out of turn incidental, the character may spend two destiny points and designate one enemy character or vehicle within medium range as the quarry. For the next three rounds, if the designated target would successfully elude Pursuit, the character may voluntarily suffer two strain to keep pace, preventing the target from escaping. There is also a new force power, Farsight. Farsight's basic power says the Force user expands normal visual senses through a connection to the Force. The user may spend light or dark side pips to ignore the effects of darkness or blindness and see normally at up to medium range for the remainder of the round. This allows the user to view everything most sentients could normally be able to see on a well-lit day. And of course, there are many upgrades to get for that Force power. The, by the way, you do need a force rating of 1 plus in order to use this ability, so even beginning characters can use it. Searching in the wilds is the chapter for new gear, including weapons, armor, and vehicles. For ranged weapons, we have things like the Blast Tech M300 Hunting Blaster, a Corellian Arm CR8 takedown rifle, the Night Sister Energy Bow, which I'm really curious as to why it's in this book. We have the Zerka Arms Model 57 Homesteader Hunting Rifle, 
the Field Sports FS19 compound bow, an explosive tipped arrow, incendiary arrow, net arrow, stun arrow, Field Sports Model 77 air rifle, and the Palandrix AO14 Aranea net gun mark II. So really like the addition of bow weapons, although the Night Sister Energy Bow is a rather curious addition to this specific book. For melee weapons, we have things like the Explorer's Knife, Laser Hone Trail Breaker Pole Axe, the Mersun Model 14 Stalker Vibro Spear, because of course we need another Vibro weapon, the Mon Calamari Energy Lance, the MSW-12 Nano Dagger, and the Vibro Machete, because yet again, another Vibro weapon. For armor, we have things like the Anti Pro Layered Beast Armor, Beast Hide Armor, Chitin Armor, and the Crystaldine Survivalist Armor. For new gear and equipment, we have things like the Beast Call, the Mark III Modular Backpack, the Mark III Modular Backpack Extra Pouch, the Panier Modular Cargo Handling System, Panier Modular System Extra Cargo Container, Riding Tack, Saddle Bags, Survival Equipment, Flash Fire Camp Stove, Survival Equipment Inc., Survivalist Mess Kit water purifier, healer's kit, XV-20 portable veterinary kit, micro actual star mapper, handheld navi computer, surveyor's tools, and a weapon maintenance kit. You can already tell that they're going to include some sort of beast riding here just by the fact that we have, you know, things like saddlebags. In terms of vehicles, we have things like the BR-549 Fast Track High Altitude Scout Speeder, the 610 AVA Dart Speeder Bike, the 64Y Swift 3 Repulsor Sled, because I guess we really need a sled. The AA8 Backcountry Speeder Truck, awesome that we actually have a speeder truck. The Jobin T85 Speeder Bike. The LM002 Bloodhound Survey Vehicle. The All-Terrain Exploration Transport. The All-Terrain Reconnaissance Transport. The ARC-40B Scout Reconnaissance Fighter. The Far Reach Reconnaissance Ship the Slain and Corporal V-19 Torrent Starfighter, the Alidade class Long Range Survey Ship, the Kazalis class Light Fighter, and the Wonder class Jump Fighter. Deadly Quest is the GM's Toolkit chapter. We'll find some new mechanics and beasts, as well as some plot hooks. The first expansion on mechanics we have is the Survival Skill. This will allow us to do things like fashion a small musical instrument such as a flute, chime, bull roar, or drum. We can craft a small knife, staff, or spear from rough materials such as stone, wood, or bone. We can harvest toxic plants or animals, snares and alarms around the camp. We can also craft camouflage garb or disguise clothing. So really good if you're doing a wilderness survival, you know, stranded in the middle of nowhere type of uh, adventure. In addition, we also have a nice table with additional uses for advantages, triumphs, despairs, and threats. Perhaps what is supposed to be the biggest expansion to the rules in this book are animal companions. You can use them for survival and to hunt, and they can also be used in combat, kinda. Animal companions can use the assist maneuver, which grants two boost dies. They can use harass, which allows an animal companion to attack but deal no damage. Instead, the target upgrades the difficulty of the next check once, and they can also use Menace, which grants a target a setback die on the next combat check. And then there's the Beast Riding Rules, which is honestly a better mechanic than the Animal Companions. They function similarly to starships and other planetary vehicles, only they have new actions, such as Climb, Jump, and Push. In addition, we do have new beasts, which are meant for riding. So we're going to have things like the Albeck, the Creerine, Fisrit, Hergol, Durethian Clamberwolf, Calf Hounds, Manca Cats, Mantellian Flutter Plume, Narglatch, Nexu, Porvir, Reeks, Runderins, Spintiri Globats, Uxbeast, Viractals, and Rubrthurs. And of course, at the very end, we do have some sample encounters that really make use of the Seeker specializations. This one's gonna sit at mid-tier for me, only because beast riding is kind of fairly niche. I'm sure there are some players who are really going to enjoy that aspect of a Jedi just being out there alone in the wilderness, but again, that's just gonna be for some players and really just one aspect of being a Jedi. Then again, that is what this career is for. I wish animal companions were a little bit more fleshed out, maybe with better rules for taming animals and creatures. 
we do get beast riding, which is pretty neat, but again, very niche, and I wouldn't really use it all the time, every time. But when you do use it, it's going to be something special. If you're playing as a seeker and you're just looking for more stuff, then obviously this book is going to be right up your alley. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Give this video a huge thumbs up to support the series, and I will see you guys in the next video.